What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking through an iceberg. Now if you're not familiar with what an iceberg is, it's basically a form of putting together something's darkest moments with the more kid-friendly stuff at the top and it gets darker as you go down. Now, in my search for an NFL iceberg, I discovered that no one had ever made one. So I took it upon myself and put one together for the NFL. So here it is, the complete NFL football iceberg. As you can see, the top is more well-known, unconcerning content, and as you go down, it gets to some pretty dark stuff and a lot you've probably never heard of. So sit back, get comfy, and maybe grab a snack. This is the NFL iceberg. Tip of the iceberg. USFL. The USFL, or United States Football League, was an opposing professional football league that tried to challenge the NFL. They played for three seasons from 1983 to 1985. However, the next year, when they were scheduled to have their season at the same time as the NFL for competition, the league folded. The league has recently made a comeback, though, and completed its first season of playing in 2022. Super Bowl Blackout This piece refers to the well-known blackout that happened in the middle of Super Bowl 47 during the Ravens and 49ers game. With 13:22 remaining in the third quarter, the stadium power completely shut off and was black for 22 minutes. Many fan conspiracy theories say that power was intentionally blacked by the NFL to stop the Ravens' momentum and keep the game close. The score was 28 to 6 at the time of the blackout, and the game ended 34 to 31. Tanking Tanking refers to an NFL team purposely losing games throughout the season in order to increase their draft pick and get the best college player available. This is a problem in the NFL as the league has no lottery system to even it out for bad teams like the NBA does. Teams like the 2019 Dolphins and 2021 Texans arguably took pleasure in losing games on their way to top draft picks. Spygate. In the 2007 NFL season, the New England Patriots were caught videotaping New York Jets practices. Soon after, it was reported that five years earlier, in 2002, the Patriots had videotaped the Rams' Super Bowl walkthrough practice. The Patriots won that Super Bowl, and this created an absolute frenzy known as Spygate. A former Patriots employee had video evidence of separate occasions of filming, and the controversy ended with $750,000 in fines. XFL Similar to the USFL, the XFL, or Extreme Football League, yes, they spell extreme with an X, is a professional football league created to compete with the NFL. The XFL was started in 2001 by WWE executive Vince McMahon. The league had a more gritty, street yard feel to it, like the coin toss being replaced with a scramble for a loose ball, or players being able to rock nicknames on the back of their jerseys. The league ultimately folded until trying to make a comeback themselves in 2018. Struggling to play amidst the coronavirus, the league plans to resume play in February of 2023. Team in Vegas This piece refers to the long-standing debate of whether an NFL team should be allowed in Las Vegas. A capital hub for gambling, many fear that money will get in the way of professional sports in Vegas. However, in 2020, the Oakland Raiders became the Las Vegas Raiders and relocated to the entertainment capital of the world. Fog Bowl A 1988 matchup between the Eagles and the Bears, this playoff game is infamous for immense fog that limited visibility to no more than 20 yards in the stadium. People watching on TV could not see a thing 
as the fog blocked out the cameras. Even most in attendance at the game could only see a tiny portion of the field and miss most of the action. The Bears defeated the Eagles 20-12 with players not knowing where the first down markers were and not being able to see half of their own team on the field. Andrew Luck The first pick in the 2012 draft out of Stanford, Andrew Luck was a generational talent at quarterback, and he did not disappoint in the league, at least at first. Luck was a four-time Pro Bowler, a top QB in the league, and trending towards a Hall of Fame career. That is until August of 2019, when Luck shocked the world by announcing his retirement out of nowhere. A young, amazing QB in the middle of his prime, he cited his constant struggle of rehab and recovery as his main reason for walking away. The Surface Deflate Gate. In the 2014 AFC Championship, the Patriots clobbered the Colts 45 7. However, the blowout game would go down in history as way more important than it seemed. Balls in the game were found to have far less air in them than the allowable minimum, which led to the theory that Patriots quarterback Tom Brady ordered to have the balls deflated. Rumors swirled about who was in on it, and it ended with another fine towards the Patriots, this time for $1 million. Brady was also suspended for four games. Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy, otherwise known as CTE, is a progressive brain condition that stems from repeated head trauma. What this means is that it's a condition that can be worse or better based on every different person and their experiences. CTE is common in NFL players and it's taken the blame for a number of ex-player incidents. However, CTE has very little research and knowledge about truly what it does to players and it can only be diagnosed after someone is dead right now. Botched Coin Flip in an overtime game in 1998 between the Lions and the Steelers, a coin flip would occur that made people think the NFL was rigging games. While choosing who would get the ball, the Steelers called tails on the coin. However, the officials insisted heads was said first and the Lions won the toss. Kneeling for the Anthem In August of 2016, 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick would begin a social justice movement through all of sports by taking a knee for the national anthem to protest racial injustice in America. This decision was met with extreme controversy to say the least, and Kaepernick has been blackballed out of the NFL because of it. Scripted League This refers to the conspiracy theory that the NFL fixes games each week, or at least makes it so that they are all closer matchups. This theory is halfway a joke to many, but with weekend after weekend having amazing games, it really makes you wonder. Sue's Stomps Ndamukong Sue is a Pro Bowl defensive tackle who had a long NFL career in the 2010s. Sue is well known for being one of the dirtier players in the NFL and on multiple occasions, he's gone out of his way to injure star players. His infamous move, the stomp, has seen multiple players, especially quarterbacks, fall victim. Tuck Rule It was a 2001 playoff game between the Patriots and the Raiders. And if you wonder why people call Tom Brady a cheater, here is yet another example. On a fourth quarter drive, Raiders safety Charles Woodson sacked and forced a fumble on Brady that was recovered by the Raiders. This gave the Raiders the ball and just about clinched the victory for them, until it went back to replay. Refs ruled that due to a little known rule called the tuck rule, Brady was attempting to tuck the ball away and it was therefore an incomplete pass, not a fumble. The Patriots were given another chance and this time used it to win the game and end the Raiders' season. Body of the Iceberg Ray Lewis 
Ray Lewis is a Hall of Fame Super Bowl champion linebacker who played for the Baltimore Ravens and had an inspiring football career. However, that legacy will forever be tarnished because of one night. In 2000, after a Super Bowl party, Ray Lewis and a group of friends got into an altercation outside a club. When it ended, Lewis and his friends sped off in their limo and two men were found stabbed to death. Lewis was charged with double murder, but the charges would eventually be dropped. Ray Rice. Ray Rice was a beloved NFL running back for the Baltimore Ravens from 2008 to 2013. A solid player, Rice stopped playing in the middle of his prime and would never step on a field again. This is because in the 2014 offseason, one of the most disturbing videos in football history would leak, showing Ray Rice abusing his then fiance in an elevator. The video ends with Rice dragging the unconscious woman out. Quickly, Rice was suspended and would never be back on an NFL field. Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson spent the 2000s putting together one of the best running back careers of all time. However, in 2014, Adrian Peterson was charged with felony child abuse of his own kid for giving his child a violent beating. Peterson used a tree branch to hit his son and the incident ended with the four-year-old covered in cuts and bruises. Peterson was able to recover his NFL career from this incident and still has not retired. SB Wardrobe Malfunction this piece refers to the 2004 Super Bowl, but nothing to do with the game. The halftime act for the Super Bowl included Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake singing songs. One song they performed, Rock Your Body, would become an infamous performance. In the middle of the song, Timberlake accidentally ripped up a piece of Janet Jackson's top and revealed her breasts to all 140 million viewers. The Love Boat In 2005, the Minnesota Vikings grabbed headlines for an alleged sex boat party they had on Lake Minnetonka. A number of players flew in an estimated 100 prostitutes from all over the country to go with them, and they rented two huge boats. What happened on the boats will never be known for sure, but multiple players exposed themselves in front of boat staff and engaged in public sexual activities, bringing on a number of misdemeanor charges. Fake Fan Noise In the 2013 and 14 seasons, if you went to watch an Atlanta Falcons game, you would have heard the classic cheers of thousands of football fans at the game. However, it was probably a little louder than normal. This is because the Falcons were caught pumping in fake fan noise through their whole stadium in the middle of games, particularly in crucial moments to make the stadium get louder. The Falcons were fined $350,000 for this. Little did anyone know, this was foreshadowing to 2020, when due to COVID limiting fans, every team was forced to use artificial sound. OJ Simpson. OJ was an excellent NFL running back in the 1970s, but would reach peak levels of infamy in the 90s. Simpson was tried and acquitted for the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend. What made this trial go from big to huge, though, was the outcome. Simpson was found innocent by a jury, despite the public widely believing he was guilty. Today, Simpson walks a free man with one hell of a story. Manti Teo While at Notre Dame, Manti Teo was a standout college star who would eventually go on to have a respectable NFL career. But for any football fan, only one thing comes to mind when we think of Manti Teo. When he was at Notre Dame, Teo developed a serious relationship with a girl he met online. The two became quite intimate, and although they never had met in person, they had been dating for a while, sticking to texts and calls. Then, on September 11th, 2012, Manti Teo's world came crashing down. 
On this day, his grandmother would pass away, leaving the family grieving. Just hours later, on the same day his grandma died, Teo got word that his girlfriend had also tragically passed away. Manti Teo was broken. He went out the next day and played the best game of his life, recording 12 tackles and a fumble recovery in an upset win, still grieving over the loss of his grandmother and girlfriend. Except it wasn't true. None of it was. His grandma had unfortunately died that day, but his girlfriend? She never even existed. Teo was catfished by a young man who created this character of his girlfriend, then killed her off. Tunsil's Draft Fall Laramie Tunsil was a top offensive lineman prospect in the 2016 NFL Draft. Projected as a top five pick, Tunsil began draft night ready to have the night of his life. However, just minutes before the draft started, Tunsil's social media was hacked and a leaked video of him smoking marijuana out of a gas mask became the story of draft night. Thanks to this leak, Tunsil slid in the draft, losing out on millions as team after team passed on him. After being projected as high as the number one overall pick, Tunsil fell all the way to the Miami Dolphins at pick 13. The Darkening Aaron Hernandez Aaron Hernandez was a standout tight end on the New England Patriots, playing alongside Tom Brady. In June of 2013, though, Hernandez made national headlines for being a suspect in the murder of Odin Lloyd. Hernandez would eventually be found guilty of first-degree murder and be sentenced to life in prison in 2015. Soon after being acquitted for life, prison officials discovered Hernandez's body hanging in his cell, dead. It was ruled a suicide. Hungover Super Bowl star. This piece is one of the older stories on here. In 1967, at the very first Super Bowl ever played, one Packers receiver put his name in the history books after a long night of drinking. Max McGee was a backup and not supposed to play much in the big game. So, the night before, he went out in the town bar hopping with two women alongside him. McGee showed up to the game, barely able to walk straight, and heard some terrifying news. The Packers' starting receiver was hurt. It was his time to play. Running on zero sleep, Max McGee scored the first touchdown in Super Bowl history on his way to a 138-yard, two-touchdown performance. The first touchdown in the Super Bowl came from a puking, hungover, terrible-looking man. Michael Vick Michael Vick was one of the most electric quarterbacks of all time, who was a one-man show as the Atlanta Falcons QB. However, his image and career would come crashing down in the 2007 season. In the middle of his prime, Vick was sentenced to two years in federal prison for his role in a dogfighting ring. Vick would bet on and watch animals fight to the death turning his public image into nothing short of a monster. Grant Union High School Grant Union High School is a Sacramento high school that produces a good number of professional athletes. But in the late 2000s, with two NFL player alumni to brag about, things went just about as bad as they could have. The first Grant Union alumni was Ontario Smith, in 2005, Smith was caught and arrested at an airport, carrying dried urine, sex toys, and a device to beat drug tests. However, not long after, the second Grant Union alum would make things much worse. Dante Stallworth, a longtime NFL player, was driving his car drunk when he hit and killed a pedestrian. Grant Union High School could not have felt good about their two studs right about now. Sean Taylor Sean Taylor has one of the saddest stories in all of sports. Being drafted by the Redskins, the young defensive back dominated the league in his first few years, becoming a pro bowler and a feared heavy hitter. 
The people loved Taylor, which made it all the worse when the news broke. In 2007, in the middle of Sean Taylor's fourth NFL season, five men attempted to rob Taylor's house. Protecting his house and family, Sean Taylor was shot and killed in the home invasion. It's a tragedy that still rings in the hearts of NFL fans. Brett Favre's life. Brett Favre has always been on this iceberg, but recently moved himself lower. Let's start with his sexual and harassing tendencies. Favre has had pictures of his privates leak, multiple women from the Jets organization say he tried sexting them, and declined apologizing for any of it. However, more recently, it's been revealed that Favre was also taking money from Mississippi's poor and allegedly getting it wired into other places of his liking. This one is yet to play out, so we'll just see how bad it was soon. The Abyss Hollywood Henderson Thomas Hollywood Henderson was a Cowboys linebacker who had some harsh drug issues. In 1979, at the Super Bowl, Henderson forced a fumble and had a great game. This was thanks to a mixture he took in the third quarter that consisted of water and cocaine. His drug habits continued, and a few years later, he was arrested for smoking crack with two teenage girls, who it is said he threatened with a gun and sexually assaulted. Years later, after sobering up, Henderson won a Texas lottery worth $28 million. Little Monkey This infamous quote refers to a 1972 NFL game broadcast. Live on ABC television, while announcing the game, Howard Cosell commented on wide receiver Alvin Garrett, saying, quote, yes, and that little monkey get blue, Cosell was fired soon after. Ray Carruth Ray Carruth was a Panthers wide receiver who did one of the worst things out of anyone on this list. With a pregnant baby mama, Carruth was worried about having to pay child support when his baby was born. So to combat this, Carruth hired hitmen and masterminded a drive-by shooting to kill his pregnant girlfriend and unborn child. The shooters ended up hitting and killing the pregnant woman, but miraculously, the baby was saved and able to survive. That baby is now 21 years old, and Ray Carruth has never met the boy he couldn't kill, despite getting out of prison in 2018. Hovan Belcher A Kansas City Chiefs player, Belcher's story shows some of the horrible sides of CTE. After playing in the first 11 games for the team, Belcher would end his life in a terrible way. On December 1st of 2012, Hovon Belcher murdered his girlfriend in their home. He then drove to the Chiefs practice facility and parked his car. He was confronted by his coach and general manager, and he told them what he had just done. Police were on the way, and Belcher's coaches tried talking to him. But when police cars arrived on the scene with a gun to his own head, Belcher said, quote, I've hurt my girl already, and I can't go back now. Romeo Cronell, the Chiefs head coach, pleaded with him, screaming that he was taking the easy way out. But Belcher made a cross sign and fired the gun, ending his own life. Todd Heap. With just as sad a story, but from a completely different perspective, Todd Heap has gone through hell. Heap is the father of four children, but he used to have five. In 2017, while backing up his car, Todd Heap accidentally struck and killed his youngest daughter of just four years old. The death was ruled an accident. Gary Kubiak Collapse This one is just a theory, and I'm not saying I believe it, but it is out there, so I decided to include it. But it is pretty wild. In 2013, Texans head coach Gary Kubiak fainted and collapsed on the sideline. It was ruled a mini-stroke by the NFL's official statement. This theory, though, states that Gary Kubiak, who was on his way to a 2-14 record this season, 
faked this collapse on purpose in order to make it harder for the Texans to fire him. I'm not too sure I buy into this one, but it is pretty crazy to think about. However, if he did fake it, it didn't work, as Kubiak was still fired at the end of the year. Dan Marino Draft Dan Marino was a blessing for the Miami Dolphins franchise, but many do not know the reason they were able to select him in the first place. Marino slipped all the way to the 27th pick, and the rumor is the drug abuse issue was the reason. Marino was seen as having a cocaine issue, and pair that with his low Wonderlick score, teams saw a dumb QB who couldn't get the job done. However, it paid off for the Dolphins, as cocaine issue or not, Marino has had one of the greatest NFL careers of all time. The Dark Abyss NFL Cover-Ups This theory pertains to the NFL covering up head injuries by calling them different injuries. Now, you can choose to blame the NFL or individual teams for this one, but it's hard to deny the evidence. Just weeks ago, we saw Tua Tagovailoa coming off a back injury and almost paralyzed himself on the field. NFL retirees have a lifespan of just 59 years, and still, the NFL wants to see their stars playing over safe. Saints Bounty Scandal This is one of the darkest scandals that has ever been brought to light in the NFL. In a pool that lasted from 2009 to 2011 at least, the New Orleans Saints players were rewarded with increasing pay for every opposing player they injured. Saints coaches and players would put literal bounties on players of their choosing, going out of their ways to injure people. This case was brought all the way to federal courts and saw multiple suspensions dished out. Head coach Sean Payton was suspended for the entire 2012 season. Michael Irving Scissors Michael Irvin is one of the greatest wide receivers to ever play, but he also has a moment that has been covered up and erased from NFL history to protect him. During training camp in 1998, at a barber shop, a younger player was sitting in Michael Irvin's seat. When Irvin demanded he get up, the young player held his ground and shoved Irvin, trying to earn some respect. Irving responded by grabbing a pair of scissors and stabbing his own teammate in the throat, nearly killing him. Cowboys players remained quiet about it, and Irving got let off easy. Greg Hardy In 2015, Greg Hardy, another cowboy, would make headlines for an oddly horrible act. Hardy was suspended for assaulting his ex, but it was the way he did it that grabbed attention. Greg Hardy threw his ex-girlfriend into a bathtub full of assault rifles and yanked her body all around. Hardy would never play another NFL game again. League Against the Raiders This one is pretty much how it sounds. The theory suggests that the NFL and its multiple commissioners have worked against the Raiders to not let them succeed, and it has some backing. The big one is that the ex-NFL commissioner Pete Rozelle vetoed a trade that would have given the Raiders John Elway for no real good reason. Also, the Raiders have far and away more penalties than any team in this century, and the gap is slightly amazing. Belichick Double Agents This piece refers to Patriots head coach Bill Belichick sending out his own staff to sabotage other NFL teams, and it's pretty great. Romeo Cronell, Eric Mangini, and Matt Patricia have all been sent out to different teams from Belichick's coaching and tanked them. Has Bill Belichick been stroking his evil white cat and controlling the entire league? It's quite possible. Chuck Hughes. And here we are, at the final piece of the iceberg. I've saved this last spot for Chuck Hughes who's the only player to ever die on the field in an NFL game. In a 1971 game between the Lions and Bears, Chuck Hughes was subbed into the game, collapsed, and died from a heart attack. He was 28 years old. 
and he has more than earned the darkest spot in NFL history. And there y'all go. That is the complete NFL iceberg. I hope you guys all learned something and enjoyed the video because this one was a grind to finish. But it will be the longest video on my channel. So I'll see how you guys like it and we'll go from there. Other than that, I'll see you guys next week.